<laughs> Let me just, I uh, was trying to uh, be sure. Okay, hello everyone in, out in uh, the world. Hello. How's everybody doing out there in the Stroke of Luck Internet TV world? Uh, this is Renee Marie. Uh, you join the Renee Marie uh, Stroke of Luck uh, Internet TV show hosted by Village Connection. We're honored and privileged to really be a part of the team and we're really excited. We have a wonderful show today. Um, we have a stroke survivor friend, um, Keith, who was on our telethon, and and uh, we're going to hear his his story um, about his survival and his 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 journey back and how he really has made a difference and continues to make a difference in the world. And it's really exciting um, to have connected with him. I sent him a quick email a while ago. Um, and he responded really quickly, and we're really honored and privileged. I don't know if anybody could see he's on the. Can they see his photo on the screen? There he is. There he is. There's Keith. Keith and Babette. Babette. Hi, Keith and Babette. Hi. Let me just turn. Hi. We're gonna. I'm gonna do a little intro, but I just wanted to uh, talk to our audience uh, about who's gonna be our guest today. Um, but really, we want to start this program with. Um, a little bit of uh, prayer and thoughts and good wishes to all the the tragedies that have been happening in the in the in the world. the cr The world is crazy right now. It's crazy right now, and we wanted to really take this moment to share our thoughts and and send our recovering, healing prayers to everybody. Um, you know, with the, with the with the shooting that happened and the. And Texas and the bus um, accident that we just lost a child and a teacher and there's many other children in critical condition um, I'm not sure if they're critical condition but they're 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 in the hospital and uh, then you know on top of that one of the churches that I've attended and I grew up in Mary Help a Christian's Church burnt down this week on the same day so it really has been, and and in I just sent an email out that a friend of mine and we're getting together on um, on the evening, and we said let's all join together in prayer and good thoughts, um, because it's it, there's sometimes you don't have words for what's going on, um, you know. And I also said in the email uh, that in the email and Facebook post that, you know, even we want to pray and we want good thoughts even for those horrific stories that happen that don't get press and that don't get publicity and that they're struggling in their silence. And, you know, I, in my, in my book, Stroke of Luck, I, the last line in the book is life is a gift. And you really have to stop and thank everybody and thank God and thank your family and really value each moment you have with your family. So we just wanted Judy and I and Jim and everybody really just want to take a moment to acknowledge how grateful we are to have you in our lives and how grateful we are to, to be able to have this opportunity and to really just be able to be healthy enough to continue to do our work. Um, so with, you know, I just really wanted to share that with you because, you know, it's, it's terrible. All these school shootings and, and, and children, when it deals with children, even when it deals with adults, I mean, it's just sad. It's, it's very it's sad. It's tragic. 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 So we really couldn't go on this show in a happy and recovering and sharing light to everybody unless we acknowledge that we are aware of what's happening in the world and that we we send out our good wishes so um i'm gonna sing a song uh so that everybody can know that we're together with everybody um and then we're gonna go right into the interview with keith keith and babette right good keith and babette. so um we're gonna sing oh i gotta put the headset on sorry is Father Sam going to? No, Father uh, Sam couldn't call in today. Okay. Hang on, with Jim. This is uh, sorry. We got. We're just having um. Yeah, Father Sam. Hi, Father Sam. But I'm sure Father Sam. Everybody, everybody in the churches today. Oh, give me, give me this headset. Everybody in the churches today and around the world are really, really praying and really have good are really thinking about, it doesn't matter, are really thinking about 
the wishes for everybody and the good thoughts. Um, so, all right. So I, you know, to me, I speak in, I speak in song. I speak by my singing. So, um, it's really important for me to send out love to everybody through my music. So you ready, Jim? We are ready. You ready? I was born ready. All right, here we go. <laughs> You could you could hum or join in if you'd like. I like when people join in. Is that working? Great song.
I, I got to rehearse on the way in. I don't, I don't, like, that's my first singing in the morning. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know I would be singing. <laughs> so we really just wanted to send our wishes out to everybody. So that being said, let's get into our show with our special guest, Keith and Babette. Let me make sure their sound is on. Can we, can you say a few words so that we can hear you? Yeah, hey. Okay. Hey, everybody. Hi. Woo! Hi, Keith. Hi, Babette. How are you? Doing great. Thank you. Good, good. So we're really, really happy that you're joining us today. Um, you know, it, like we just said, it really takes together to, to move mountains and to really successfully... Um, you know, go through things. You, you can't do it alone. You can't do it alone. So, Keith, um, we're really happy that you were a part of our telethon, first of all. Um, Thank and you. tell us a little bit about your story um, and, you know, where you were when you suffered your stroke and, um, and how it felt. Because cause that's really important. Jim, can they hear me? Because I'm not up on my mic. So, you, so tell us a little bit. Well, so uh, I was uh, ready to go on a business trip, uh, headed to Seattle. I lived in Portland, Oregon at the time, and I uh, was getting ready to head to Seattle uh, one morning, and I I just uh, I got up and was working, and no one was home at the time, and uh, I just didn't feel right, you know, and I worked many hours every day, uh, uh, just like everybody does. But had we had our own business and anyway, so uh, I was getting ready to go and I was I was off and so I thought, well, I'm just gonna lay down and and uh, I ended up going to sleep for hours and and then Babette came home from work and um, you know just kind of check check things out and I remember you looking in my mouth and a bunch of stuff like that. I don't know what you were looking for. <laughs> I, I was looking for signs of a stroke actually. Oh, the, wow. You know, mouth and stuff, and he didn't have any of that. What, what were yeah. you looking for? What, I'm sorry, what were you looking for? The mouth? Yeah, like, you know, they say how the mouth will droop and, you know, yes, like paralysis yes, and yes, stuff. Um, yes. I was looking for those kind of signs, and I didn't see anything. But Ben, why, so, why, why did you, what, what was the intuition that you had that led you to consider that maybe you had a stroke? Well, for one, I've worked in the medical field, so I see that kind of, I okay. did see that kind of stuff all the time, but just the way he was acting was not he. I mean, he was not himself, and um, so I just was checking whatever I could to see. I'm not sure I act like he still, but... <laughs> <laughs> but Beth, before we get, before we continue, what is your profession? You said in the medical I'm field? Actually, I'm a health and life coach now, but when I was in the medical field, I was in medical records. Okay. So you're around it. You, you've you seen and, you know, when you're in something, you're aware of, op, you know, op, options or things that could have happened. So that that's oh, good. Oh, yes. That's good. So, Keith, yeah. continue. I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. So... Uh, basically we waited the next, the next morning, uh, Babette always went to work by five o'clock in the morning and I was just, I was supposed to take this trip to Seattle, like I said, and I got up and I showered and, and then I got a phone call from, uh, my nephew actually, uh, we always talked early in the morning and just about business and stuff and, and he, we're talking on the phone. He's like, well, what the heck is wrong with you, <laughs> Uncle Keith, you know? And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And, he said, hey, do me a favor before you go to Seattle, hang on. And then the next thing I know, my business partner called me and had a similar experience. And then the next thing I know, Babette gets, she walks in the door and takes me to the hospital. And so uh, I had a stroke and I I have a special, uh, special, <laughs> I don't know if that's the word you want to use, but I have a thing called HHT, which is a hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia. Wow. Uh, just means I have a blood disorder, and that's what, what caused a stroke for me. Wow, wow, wow. Can you tell us the signs that go along with that HHT? Yeah, um, so nosebleeds are very um, 
are one of those things that if you have nosebleeds, especially like as a, as a child, and you're having them constantly, um, you should get checked out. And, and don't just get checked out by any doctor. Uh, frankly, you need to look at the HHT um, system, and there's more and more doctors now that are, are becoming yes. part of that. And um, and discover if, if you do have HHT or not, because, um, you know, like I said, I had a stroke because of it. Totally changed our lives, which we'll talk about down the road. But right. And anyway. Keith, what are the causes of HHT? I'm sorry? What are the causes of HHT? Well, um, it's a, it's a, a blood... Um, help me out here. Well, yeah. You're, it's a, you're born with it, frankly. You are, it's a genetic, and you're either born with it or you're not born with it. And it doesn't skip generations, but um, your blood just doesn't, you bleed a lot or you'll have AVMs in your body um, or in your head. Um, Keith had two in his lungs. Our daughter actually has it in our granddaughter and our daughter has AVMs in her chest too. So they go in and they coil them. But what happens is the um, capillaries and the, the arterial the veins, they don't mix right, so the blood doesn't flow correctly. So um, then that's why they have to go in and um, coil them so the blood will flow correctly. Wow. You know, it, 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 so I'm assuming, and I only am assuming this because in my world, my children, um, when they, my one daughter, not my first daughter, but my second daughter, when now that and she wants to have children, she needs to be tested. She was tested for the stroke um, and whether she could have this specific thing. And, and they, she is apt to, have, uh, to having it. So my question to you is, can you test your children for the stroke or this, um, what do you call it, um, illness or disease HH. or HHT that you have? Yes. Yeah, uh, our, our kids, um, grandkids, uh, uh, a lot of our, I mean, my mom uh, kind of took the ball when this happened she did. because it's a genetic thing. And, um, and she's been, I won't say what I'm thinking, but <laughs> she's been uh, part of, <laughs> on it like, like, a, yeah. like crazy. <laughs> so, and we're very thankful. And we're very thankful for that. So you, you have to be tested. Um, otherwise, you could end up like, like this. And so and they're pretty adamant, too, if um, you're going to have a baby, they want those babies tested like immediately um, to be tested. Brie Marie, do you guys have nosebleeds? Does your daughter I, have nosebleeds? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, but I didn't have what you had. Um, they just, they decided to test her because, um, because of my stroke experience that, you know, we're just seeing whether she could be prone to have a stroke. Now, back when I had my stroke 28 years ago, I think it was 20, 1989, there was no test like that. There what was kind no, of tests do they do for your daughter? They do a blood test. Am I correct in my, in my thought process, Babette, that they do a blood test to see? Well, that I don't know. I know with Keith, because of his genetic disease, they do a blood test, but I don't know for in general um, strokes what exactly what they well, do. Well, no, but, but, but for HHT, but yes, yes they, for do. HHT they, do. They, they do a specific kind of test that, um, that bring, you know, they, they discover it, I guess yes, is what genetic. I'm trying to say. And let yeah. me ask you this, Babette, since you're in the medical field or were in the medical field, can, can like you just said, that babies need to be tested as soon as they're born, they need to be tested? So they need to be tested immediately because um, to make sure, did I hear that question right? But they need to be tested right away in case if they do have this disease, they'll want to do a brain scan our granddaughter had one within her first three months of um, birth to make sure she didn't have any um, bleeding disorders in her head right away or AVMs um, because with the young children, if they don't get them 
taken care of right away in the brain if they have one there um they they could die so um so anyways yeah so i mean uh, i just want to share with our audience like we are not your doctor and we want to make sure that you you know this is just information for you and really just talk to your doctors do your homework talk to your doctors talk to nurses, talk to outside uh, family members that experience stroke, because each stroke and each stroke case is unto itself unique. Am I correct? Yes. 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 Absolutely. Keith, I'm wondering about your recovery time. What happened after you went to the hospital? Judy, you're good. I was just going to ask that. Oh, all right. (laughs) No, she's good. (laughs) So tell us about your recovery. Uh, So, uh, for me, I was in the hospital for, I don't know, five days or something like that. And, uh, and I came out and, uh, Babette had to stay home with me for, uh, one month or two and babysit me, <laughs> which should probably still be happening. But anyway, um, and, uh, and then I, you know, I started back to work and frankly, um, I was, um, not myself and, um, you know, Part of what what I do now is I, I help other stroke survivors regain their confidence back quicker, and uh, because that's what happened to me is I really lost my confidence. And um, gosh, I could even share a couple of quick stories. I mean, we would have these business meetings, and uh, here here I'm sitting with my partners, and we're all very you know. Um, Type A personality kind of people. I was a sales manager and blah blah blah, and we, we were growing our company it? like crazy. Keith, man, and, the type uh, of business did. you were in, the type of business you were in. Oh, we we manufactured cabinet doors, uh, if you can believe that. We sold to cabinet makers, and we were a multi-million dollar company. We had grown it like crazy. You grew it. Yeah. You were part of that. Yeah. That growth. Absolutely. Absolutely. I was. Thank you. And, um, so, um, you know, we'd be in these meetings and, and all of a sudden tears would start flowing down my eyes and I couldn't, uh, communicate. And, um, uh, it was very, very, very frustrating, um, to say the least. And long story short, um, I ended up, um, having to leave the company and, um, luckily I had disability insurance and, uh, you know, Judy um, has asked me, and, and I know <clears throat> her name, Marie, too. I believe it or not, you guys, I got disability insurance approved for myself and for our partners uh, 22 days before I had my stroke, and I was the best one rated. So it's it's a wild, right. it's a wild share, ride. You never know. Share with them what your what the physical what your physical. Um, uh, result was from the test because when you go for the disability you have to go for exam and what did they tell you when you went for the exam i know Nothing. what they said <laughs> yeah i mean they, they uh you know seriously that one was the best one rated right. we had four there were four partners and i was the best one rated um and um you know i was in great health i was in great shape great health this hht is something that um, it's fairly new. Um, they don't know, you know, people don't even know how to test for it and stuff. But it's still, it's still, it's still getting. Still some re- lots of research now. Yeah, and I, I mean, my 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 point in and um, you know, just highlighting that is that you know we that's one of the things that we tell everybody that doesn't discriminate that it can hit anybody at any specific time even those that are healthy you know that you know that you're in the 20 percent you know that you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't prevent this from happening um, up until that point because you had no 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 uh, trigger or no history about this happening to you and that's why we want to make sure that people know that, that they have to know the fast, the signs, the face, which um, Fabet looked for, um, the, the arms and the, uh, the arms, um, the smile and the speech, and really the biggest thing is the time, the time. I also want to mention that uh, Dr. Jill Taylor 
from Bloomington, Indiana, posted on her website, My Stroke of Insight, and these signs that spell out the word stroke, S, speech or problems with language, T, tingling or numbness in your body, R, remember or problems with thinking, D, off balance or problems with coordination, or a killer headache, mm. and eye problems with vision, mm. eye problems or vision problems. And you mentioned, Keith, that you had tears coming down your face. That is a sign of a stroke also, and it can happen prior to the stroke. Tears coming down your face or laughing for no reason. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Keith, let's, 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 let's really um, talk about preparation in your life right we spoke about this on the phone how you know most people don't think it'll ever happen to them and how what what, what triggered you to get the disability insurance like what was the because i think we all should have disability insurance so that if something does happen um we're covered so what triggered you to get the disability insurance well, as owners of the company, you know, we, we had uh, grown this company pretty good sized and uh, we just wanted to protect. Um, frankly, it was a protection for the, the company that we had. That's what it was really designed for. And, um, you know, of course now it, it, it's, it's happened and, and looking back, it was a, the right choice for sure. I do speak at some disability, um, I go to insurance companies and I speak because the the disability the guys who are selling it, you know it's it's always uh, they want to make money they're they doing it they're, they're doing it because they want to make money but in all honesty there's a bigger picture absolutely and and so if they can get that in their mind um, and, and really listen to people and you know I'm kind of going into my my mode there and I don't mean to but no, you can but go into it. It, you, you really you need to listen to people and, and the people who are out there um, you know you need to look into disability insurance who, who don't have uh, haven't had a stroke already I'm not kidding you that um, because if, if I were in a situation where I didn't have that uh, life would be a lot different for us uh, for sure yeah I mean um, I, I agree with you I you know I have a um, we have a a partner or, or she's a part of the team Tracy Lawrence and she talks about financial support and she talks about finances and she talks about disability and really set yourself up for your future because um, I one day I heard from um, Affleck that uh, bankrupts that health situations are the biggest cause of bankruptcy that's why most people go bankrupt and, and lose their house not bankrupt um, uh, foreclosures, live. foreclosures right. on your home because of bankruptcy, because of their health situation. And also the uh, nursing home costs, if yes. you have to go to a nursing home. And, and if I can interrupt here for a second, uh, you guys, you know, this is one of the keys uh, uh, for relationships staying together, of course. And, you know, I'll, I'll give a plug to my wife. Uh, a huge plug because she stayed the course and, and worked through it because you know as a stroke survivor you're not easy to deal with um, <laughs> and, you know probably still not <laughs> but, but I know when I, is, when I was in when I was in the hospital they said and I do not remember this they said I was a monster I, I was. can't I can't they imagine said that, that I threw people out of the room I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want anybody. They said, I, th I threw everybody out of the room. I don't remember that, but that's <laughs> what they say. So, like, I get it. I get it. So, but, Beth, tell us, tell us, tell us how it felt to be on the outside, helping somebody that you loved when, you know, when you suffer a stroke, when your, your family or someone you love has suffered a stroke. Well, it definitely changed our lives, um, and it was tough. It was, I think I held my emotions in for several months. Um, 
I did. And they really didn't come back out till I went back to work because I was trying to stay strong for keep. Um, but it took a few months for those emotions to come back. Um, and I just, I lost it the first week at work <laughs> there finally. Um, and you do need to let that stuff out. But, um, one of the biggest, um, advices I got was from this lady that I worked with at the hospital. She was in her seventies. Um, and she was still working there. And she told me, whatever you do, don't ever take Keith's voice. Always let him talk. Don't ever take over conversations for him. Let him be him. And that was the best advice. She said that her dad had a stroke and her mother um, just totally took over. I mean, dad could never say a word and she goes, he, he doesn't have a life anymore. And she goes, it's the saddest thing. And she just begged me, please don't ever do that to keep. And so I really took that. And, um, anyways, I just felt like that was a huge thing because we have seen this over and over where a spouse will take over, um, you know, the stroke survivor and, and that person doesn't have a life anymore. And I'm glad I didn't do that. That was good advice because um, from my experience, I, uh, we, we, we need to help the stroke person recover and get back mm -hmm. their quality of life. And they can do it. You, you, it can be yeah. done. Look at myself and keep, you know. Yeah. Our, our paths are a little bit different now, of course, because of, but in life, whether it's what life takes different courses, no matter what, you know, you got to go down different roads. Life is not plan A. It's always plan B or our saying is, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, Keith, one day we're going to do a show about, um, the aphasia side, the, 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 the mind side and how it felt to really, cause that's a whole conversation unto itself. And I'd love for you to be involved with that, but bet because it, 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 you know, on the outside, we suffered a stroke. Everybody knows we suffered a stroke and they can see that we suffered a stroke, but a stroke is a brain attack and it has altered our brain and our, our mindsets and how we process things. And that's what you're saying that, you know, you had to give him the time to defragment his brain. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, uh, and I'm not sure I, I understood what, what you were saying there was, you had to give him time to defragment. Is that what you said? Well, yeah, but you, you know, our brain to have a brain attack, I have a trauma to it. And sometimes it takes time to everything to be put back in its place where it's got to go. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have Absolutely. Yes. A absolutely Renee Marie. Yes. And the other thing is so many stroke survivors and, and or brain trauma, uh, you know, people who experienced brain trauma, what happens is they, they have this initial reaction um, and it's like, oh crap, what happened to me? You know, they don't really understand it. And then they go through a, a few stages. And, and one of those stages is, frankly, they just, they give up. And, and listen, um, I'm very, very passionate about some things. And one of those is that uh, the neurologists and, and the people out there, and I, I, I'm so thankful for them and I, I appreciate them so much, but there's so many of them that don't continue to get their education. And I was told, and I've asked so many stroke survivors, and I'd even ask you, Renee Marie, you know, who was told that after a year, that's as good as it's going to get or a year and a half. And almost always everybody's hands go up. And I'm telling you, that it comes down to, are you willing to work to get your mind back, but you have to work? Look what you've accomplished. Look what you have accomplished, Renee Marie. And I'm telling you, it, it doesn't have to be that, but people can really grow, but they got to work and they got to believe, right? But that's why it takes people like us who have experienced it and dealt with it to share that with both sides to share that with the families of stroke patients and to share that with stroke patients 
because when I was an ambassador in the hospital one time, you know, I would I would kindly say, you know, it's gonna to the stroke patient, it's gonna be it's gonna be rough. We're gonna be here, but we're gonna get through this. And you know, I I keep going back to Dominic Cordelessa. He he's an angel in my life, and really, he he was very strong, and he 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 gave me the tools to learn how to recover, to process, to, to think, to work through things. And, and we have to give each other the opportunity. And on both sides, it's very, 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 very hard. And then we'll talk about one of our passions, right? The insurance and the financial aspect of it. When insurances tell you that you don't need to have any more recovery because you're done, right? That's, that that to me you're is not like, done you had, <laughs> need a lot of recovery and you need a lot of rehab and insurance companies don't want to pay for it so you you create you created a foundation tell us a little bit about you and you know we i mean i want to tell everybody that we're definitely going to have to have keith and babette back on the show because you know we have so much to really talk about and share with the world you know and and I, I don't know, I mean, uh, what time is it, Judy? I mean, it's already quarter of, and I just want to make sure we get all the information. And we have about 12 more minutes, but I want to, 15 more minutes, but I just want to make sure that we get all the information. So tell us a little bit about the foundation that you started and, and its purpose and, and how, you know, they can get in touch with you. So tell us a little bit about your foundation called Your Partner in Stroke Recovery. Oh, sorry, Strength, okay, strength After strength Stroke. Up. <laughs> strength after. I was going to say that. <laughs> but yeah, it's strength after stroke. And, and quickly, I'll, I'll tell you, I've had it for a while. And I went through a, a period where I thought I knew what everybody wanted. And uh, and I struck out on that. Um, um, and then I discovered, well, <laughs> maybe I should ask some people. And so I went through this process of asking uh, some stroke survivors, you know, what was it that they were really looking for? And that's when I... I and, and my site is strengthafterstroke.com. And of course, it's always in a, you know, a state of doing whatever it's doing or, or getting updated. But the BASE program is something that I came up with. And BASE is about belief, attitude, strength, and energy. And uh, I'll just real quick, this is a, a booklet that, this is the beginning, just kind of a workbook. Wow that I've created for it. And um, listen, I just want to say, and I know we're, we're close on time. Uh, if anybody wants that for free, I will send the PDFs to them. Uh, they just need to contact me at Keith, K-E-I-T-H, at strengthafterstroke.com. Keith at strengthafterstroke.com and, uh, and ask for the base program and I will send the PDFs to them for free and uh, listen we just want to make a difference uh, for people and really about regaining your confidence back because so you know after going through a stroke that's really what happens we we really struggle to to get our confidence back and I'm not saying it's easy it's like you said it takes time but this workbook would help those people um, gain some traction, get back in their life, and that's what it's about. So, you know, I, I, I think with me, and I, I, for years, I mean, mine happened. How did long ago did your stroke happen, Keith? 2010. 2010. So it was uh, about eight years, eight years. Mine happened in 1989. And honestly, it wasn't, I was living in this fairy tale. <laughs> and, you know, I, I when when people would, would say something negative to me or attack me or, you know, uh, how sometimes people are. Before the stroke or after? No, after the stroke. I would just get so flabbergasted that I would crawl in a corner and couldn't even deal with what they were saying to me. And honestly, once they started, I put up a block that I didn't hear them. So maybe they had like finished and fixed what they were saying to me, but I put this block up. And once again, Dominic, it's Cord Dom Dominic Cordelessa <laughs> taught me tools how to, how to deal with that, you know? But I was so, it, it was this fear in me. I was so afraid. I was so afraid. I, you know, and I think guess that's what you're saying. It's just, it's scary. 
And you're a very well, positive and one, person. One of the things I'll, I'll say to that, uh, if I may, is that, you know, and, and listen, I know that that was real. People did do that to you. But, but the thing to remember on this, and um, of course, you're awesome and, and everything, but so many people are in that stage right now that you, you're just talking, you're just describing. So many people, um, you, well, excuse me, let me back up. You've got to understand that people think about themselves most of the time, like 90% of the time. And so somebody may look at you, they may see you, and they may make a comment, they may be, you know, some stupid thing. But listen, you, you've got to be able to say, you know what, that person's just being who they are, and, and they're not even going to remember me in a second from now. We've got to stay focused on ourselves and growth within and, yes. and getting that belief back. And, and so that's one of the things I, I really kind of teach people. But Keith, how do... See, this is this is this is the this is the um, the part that I try to help people with. Like, okay, you have to understand. You have to be able to process and understand that this is you exactly what you just said. That this is not about you. But when you're in a brain trauma, and and they've and 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 you're all over the place. You're scattered. It's it's almost like you have to peel back the onions to allow that understanding in so there's a there's a there's a there's a gap between that that's where you know that's where I believe that you have to have your love around you like your wife you have to have the support around you to strong support you know right Babette it can't be like you know uh, you know take care of them and do everything for them it has to be a process to help them to understand that they can do this, but they have to do it. And I'll be here. I'll be here. What do you need? We'll be here. Very, very, very good point. And one of the things I'll say about that is that, um, you know, I said stroke survivors and anybody who is in that, you know, works with stroke survivors or anything like that, they can, they can use this formula. And listen, it's, it's not a fix all or nothing, but, it is a step-by-step -step process where people can can actually work on those things, and it can be their their um, um, shoot. I just lost it, but the, the people that help stroke survivors and spouses and all. Anyway, for right. what it's worth, and right. you're right on that. Right. So, um, tell us once again where they can email you. Uh, Keith at Strength After Stroke. Com. And what is your website's name? Strengthafterstroke.com. Strengthafterstroke.com. Okay. So, um, Keith, this, uh, Jim's telling me have about 10 more minutes. So, thank you, Jim. Um, so, let's talk about, let's talk about the, uh, uh, the, how we all could work if you don't have that that disability i mean how what should people do if they need re continuing recovery continuing therapy and their insurance is telling them that it's it's your time's up boy that that's a great great question i wish i had the answer for i'll tell you when i had my stroke and I uh, came out of the hospital, we didn't get any help, um, you know, and um, it's frustrating uh, to think back. But we did, uh, Babette went to work and found a therapist uh, to start seeing. And that's really why I, I started this program, because I felt that there's so many people out there that will help you learn how to move again, which is huge. I mean, it's, it's, don't take this wrong on anybody, but the brain and getting your belief back in yourself and learning how to, um, be confident again and, and you know, the work and, and all those things that come later. I mean, that is the self help that I was looking for. So, um, I kind of went off track there, but. No, but with the hospitals, when Keith was discharged, 
they basically gave them discharge instructions to go home and stuff, but to follow up in six weeks with his doctor. And that was it. That's not enough. There, there was no other instructions like for to follow up for like maybe speech therapy or to kind of get him back on track. We were both like, well, what do we do now? Right. And that was the hardest part for us. And there are so many people that go home from the hospitals with that same feeling. But, you know, I was lucky that we had friends and I had this gal who um, worked up at the hospital where he was at. She was in, um, I think, occupational therapy. And anyway, so she contacted her and told that lady that Keith needs to get in there. So that lady went to work and um, contacted doctors and was able to get Keith in for some speech therapy. But but we had to do that on our own. We had to figure out what are we going to do. I mean, what's the next step? I, I don't have. I don't know the answer to that, Renee Marie. I, I don't know what what to say. I mean, that, as far as the finance. I mean, yeah. I mean, I know that that's a rhetorical question, I guess, because because in my world, in my world, and I'm sure that everybody that has had something, an illness or a tragedy happen in their lives. Um, you know, the first thing that we should worry about is someone's health. And then secondary should be the insurance and where you're going to pay for it. The families are yeah. traumatized themselves for what a loved one has gone through. And then they have to sit there. I, I, I'm passionate about this. Sorry. I and feel then they, passionate about it. I know. Well. And then they have to sit there and be on the phone with the insurance and, and deal with what, what what's the next step i mean and, and the, the the pain and agony i mean you know money is a problem anyway for most everybody yes. right i mean let's face it money is just a, a worry about it for about everything and so then you throw that on top of that just like you're saying yeah. it's it sucks yeah my my vision and i i pray that one day this will come to light is to have a center where stroke and aphasia patients could come, almost like the Adler's Aphasia Center in Maywood, because they do a phenomenal job with this, um, and you know have have them come and be able to recover, and then have some recover without having to worry about the insurance. Um, you know that that there'll be doctors there that that volunteer their time or or donate time to our services. Um, and then on the back end, have somebody um, there working with the family on the insurance and the part of it. Because this is an ongoing thing. And it's part of your mission center. It, if I can, I mean, I probably shouldn't, but I'm working with a, a, another guy who is a sharp, sharp guy right now who um, I, I probably shouldn't say too much, but we are working on developing a program that can can be in the hospitals because it's so hard to get into the hospitals and he's been working on this for years uh because of all the laws and the hipaa laws and all this stuff but at any rate um he's getting closer all the time to where we could actually be a part of the um right after they're in the hospital and they're they're going through that and we could teach people how or, or give them the the um um, the information. information that's needed for them to know how to grow themselves again. And so, anyway, I'm sorry, you just hit a passion bone for me too. That's so. good. Well, you know, keep us um, abreast keep us informed on what's going on because you know you're in Arizona, we're in New Jersey, and, and New York. Yeah, New York, <laughs> and and we have Demont who's on the show right now down in Michigan. He, I, I, I'll speak for you, Demont, that I am absolutely positive. <laughs> that he would join us in whatever we could do to make that around the world and around the country, you know, because... Absolutely, yeah. Yes, yes, it's and, really... And before I lose time, I, you know, I know we may have more time, but I just want to make sure I say that thank God for you guys and for the passion, the desire, the energy, I mean, the energy that it takes to do it you're doing i don't think most people understand it is a huge event 
and uh, you guys need to be high fived and thanked and uh, yeah, yeah, we're blessed to, to know you guys. But what, you know what? As as this show began, I said it takes together to do it. It takes together yeah. to do it. You know, it takes myself, it takes Judy, it takes my foundation, it takes my Stroke of Luck team, it takes Village Connection, it takes you. You know, now you're a part of our family. Together, the power is in together. You know, I always go back to those children that marched in, in Washington, D.C. For, for the gun shootings, you know? Their voices were po more powerful together. And it's so sad because although strokes are becoming more... A on the forefront of the 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 conversation, um, it's not it it's not really that well spoken about. You know, it has become more. I do see the commercials on TV about strokes and stuff, but we have to push and get that more, and we have to go to Washington D.C. And we have to continue lobbying. Yes, in Washington, I went down to Washington D.C. last year to talk to those, um, to the senators and stuff, you know, and I, I was watching something, I forget what I was watching yesterday, and they were saying that, you know, let it happen, and I pray it doesn't, but let it happen to somebody who can make a difference in the world, like, you know, politically, or someone that has some power and backing, and then we'll see change, but we don't want that We don't happen. want to wait we, that we, long. We want to be the change. We want to be the ones that are saying... And the truth is, Keith, and I, you know, both and I have the same passion, and so does Judy, so does Bet, that we don't want to go in and tell them what we want done. What we want is to sit down with them and have a conversation and start the process to make us better for everybody. That really is our passion. That really is our passion. Absolutely. Our passion and our strokes goal. like strokes like the number two. Uh, uh, medically problem or whatever it is in the whole world. I mean, it's huge. Yeah. Why can't we be a little proactive? And and so anyway. Yeah. Well, that's where we come in. You gotta be the. You gotta. You gotta be the forefront of the change that you want to see in the world. You can't sit back and complain about things um, and not not take a stand and make a difference in the world. In the world. So, um, I I wanna I wanna give you this platform, Babette and Keith, to really. Um, share your last comments and and would you mind coming back on and talking about the the mind and and how the brain works and um, that would be an awesome like really that's a whole conversation an hour long to how it feels how it felt and how we can help those and I would love to have Dominic Cordelis on that show how it feels to go from the stroke to the understanding that this has to be done, how we bridge that gap, that that would be... I can give you a July date. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh -huh. July? I happen to have... Oh, okay. July, July will work, yeah. Okay, I have... so we'll talk later yeah, on. We'll... But I want to give you guys the platform um, to share about fundraisers you're having or, you know, this this is your time. So please take it and run with it. Thank you so, so much. I again, I really appreciate you guys. Um, and what do you say to to run with it now? <laughs> <laughs> Go get it. Uh, oh well, I do have a fundraiser happening right now. Yeah, it's uh, um, it's about HHT though. And uh, we are fundraising for HHT. Uh, if you go to the Cure HHT site, um, it's Cure HHT. Um, and then you go, gosh, I don't remember exactly. I think you got to go to like the people or something. And anyway, in there, there's a fundraising section. And uh, my, my site is on classy.org. I, I won't go into all that, but you can... Or email me or anything if anybody's interested you know what, in helping Jim, with that. Uh, Keith, send me, send, me, send me a link for the site. Send me a link to go to okay. the page. And I'll be able to okay. share that with everybody and post it. Awesome. Anyway, uh, but other than that, you know, we're just uh, we're passionate about helping people. The, the base program, um, I know it'll help people um, if they... If they if they'll act on it. Um, I can't do it for them. 
and uh, they got to be willing to go through the steps. And, and as you know, Henry, it's it's a tough it's a tough deal. But you got to you got to decide to make that difference in your life. I mean, you got your whole life to live still. Get get back in the game. Don't listen to these people who say you just have a year, year and a half. That is crap. Excuse me for saying that. Uh, you can keep learning. Our, our brains are so um, complex and so intelligent. There's so much that you can still do. You just have to believe it with this much and go to work. And uh, you can you can be awesome. You're going to have a great life. You just know, keep working at it. You know, you know how I feel? Like you, in your life, you need to be preparing for things. You need to educate yourself. You need to keep your brain active. You need to do the work before something happens because when it happens you'll be stronger in your recovery you'll be strong in your recovery it's almost like an athlete an athlete has the ability to come back and and very true and 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 be successful at his recovery because he's strong i totally agree with it doesn't mean you have to be strong in your 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 body but you have to be strong in your mind you have to be strong so i really believe that strong and positive yes and strong and positive is right? absolutely, and you have and, to have faith. And absolutely. Yeah. So, is there anything absolutely. that you would like to say before we thank you so much for being a part of the show? Where we want to let Pamela has a, the Justice Hour. We, it's not no. Okay, so um, so Pam, is she doing next week? I'm fine. I'm just saying how proud I am of Keith. Um, oh. <laughs> and how thankful I am for him um, because he could have gone down a whole nother route and, That's, you know, because he was really depressed at first and it was really tough for him. It's devastating to have proud of him because he got right back in there because he wasn't going to let this control his life and now he's, you know, he's doing awesome but, and he's going to help others. I'm very proud of him. But, but <laughs> Thank ben, you. Should I, I could give her a kiss right now. Yes, go ahead. But I will tell you, Babette, that you played a big part in why he wanted to recover without him even saying anything to me. Because he had a purpose to recover. He had a purpose because he had you and he had his family around him. And love is so important in your life to have love. It doesn't matter whether it's love from a friend or to have real people in your life that care will, about you. will care about you and that support you. And gives you a purpose and stands by you while you're while you're. So I want to thank you as well, Babette. Thank you, I appreciate that. You're welcome. You're welcome. So um, we're gonna we're gonna not say goodbye, but you know, just uh, till we meet again. <laughs> but it really was um, a pleasure, and we're blessed to have connected with you and to really have a passion and and really to to stay. Together and make a difference. To and stay I'll be together. talking with you both. Yes. Shortly. Yes. So the next. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. But I don't don't get off until we uh, stream out. But um, okay. So um, if anybody has any questions, you know, um, you could you could. Uh, Keith is on uh, Facebook as well. He he's Keith Taylor, right? That's the the name on your Facebook, right? Keith Taylor. Yeah, yeah. Keith Taylor, and you can find him on my page as well. Yeah. But um, thank you so much for coming today. Um, it was a great show. Yes. It was a great show. Do you want to talk about our next show, which is going to, we're skipping next well, week. Next tomorrow. week we're taking off. Mm. Come on, Jim. Yeah. Woo-hoo! Like Actually, it's time for me to regroup and really um, to do the back end work. It takes a lot of back end work to do a telethon and a show and, you know, about life. And what I just said before is you got to prepare. So, you know, I have learned in my life that it's about, you know, finishing things and preparing it and then moving on. So, so Sunday, June 3rd at the Village Network, Village Connection Network, we will be featuring nurse Michelle Gripko and Leanne Brill talking about her mother's stroke. Yeah, Leanne Brill was the, uh, the uh, Senior America 2017 Senior America yes. winner that won. Um, that her, she, actually, she 
um, Virginia had invited her to be on the show, and it wasn't until after she was booked on the show that we found out that her About mom it, yeah. had suffered a stroke. And actually, you have to get in touch with Cher as well, the Cher tribute artist, because she had someone in her family. I have her scheduled okay. as wow, well. She's good. She's I have good. Uh, Cher, Louise Bruno, scheduled for Sunday, July 8th. We got a lot of good shows coming up, and I actually have a lot more that I have to share with <laughs> Judy. So, thank you so much. Do you have anything? It was to, it was great that? talking with Keith and about that. Yes. And as I said, I've got July. I have got a July date open. <laughs> so when's Demont gonna be on? I have to schedule. That. Okay, Demont, we have to schedule you. I'll be calling you tonight, Demont. Demont. <laughs> Jim, do you have anything you want to chat? We've been talking so much, I forgot poor Jim oh, was I'm over here. Oh, I'm hiding over here. It's okay. Thank you very much. I apologize for the uh, slow start. Nah. But, you know, we, we all make up for time, it. We had extra time, though. Yeah, yeah. It all worked out. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, we're going to fly out of here. Um, can, you, can you put them back on split screen, Jim? Mm -hmm. Because we want you to blow your kisses because we always blow our kisses to everybody. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. Have a long weekend. Share it with your family and friends. And honestly, take time to just spend time with your family and friends. Give them a call. Visit them. Care about care them. about them. And make that the forefront of your your time because uh, life is short. Life is short, and it goes by too fast. And we don't want anything to happen. And once again, we're praying for all those tragedies that have happened, um, the ones in the past, the ones uh, that just happened. So um, let's blow our kisses, everybody. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> See everybody next week. No, two weeks. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.
Thank you.